and that that's part of being a trader. You've you've got to you've got to embrace the loss. Well, I heard somebody say the other day that one of the Marines uh, slogans. Now I've never been in the military, but one of their slogans is uh, "embrace the suck." And you know, sometimes when you're a trader, you just got to embrace the suck because you know what? Sometimes it sucks, and you got a loss. You got to deal with it. This is the How to Trade Stocks Options podcast, brought to you by 10MinuteStockTrader.com, where we cover finance, stocks, options, entrepreneurship, education, and money. And here's your host, voted one of the top 100 people in finance, Christopher Ewell. Hey, I've got a free video training, and it's exposing how great traders make millions in up and down markets. And this is how we take the guesswork out of trading. Listen, it's time to go back to the basics. To take the guesswork out of trading, you need to learn how great traders make millions in up and down markets. And you're gonna get exactly that in this free video training that I put together for you. Now, this is part of a new training series that we're putting together, and it'll be gone in the next few weeks, so you definitely wanna go check it out now. You can get access to the free video training by clicking the link below. And like I said, this is exactly how great traders make millions in up and down markets. And I am so excited to share it with you. So click the link below to start taking the free training right now. Hey, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you'll be notified every time we give you more tools, tips, and tricks to help you trade faster and trade smarter every single week. Hey there, traders. Welcome back to today's How to Trade Stocks Options podcast. Today, I have a special guest online, Sam Shames from Simpler Trading. Sam and I were just talking about beforehand all this uh, crazy market moves that's going on out there. And you know what, Sam? At the moment, obviously this will change by the time it airs, we don't even have a president decided. What in the world are we doing? Hey, good to be here, Chris. Um, Yeah, yeah, fantastic stuff in the market. The market does tend to move really big when something happens that nobody expects. Um, So we're certainly starting to see that because You know, everybody was kind of on one side of the boat expecting chaos. We get chaos, but because everybody was already positioned for it, you kind of snap back against those positionings. So that's my read on it, at least. We're up 2,000 on the week. Oh, no big deal. 2,000 on the week. You know what? I I went all to cash uh, about a week and a half out from the election, and I I had intended to um, just not get back in until after the election. Had there been an election, because we really don't have one yet, had there been a decision, I guess you could say, um, I probably would be in right now trying to work on this trend going up. But since there isn't a decision, I am still on the fence and I'm I I would rather sit in cash than than play being on the fence. Uh, Since there's not a decision, I'm, I'm concerned that maybe there's going to be a catalyst event, right, that that comes out. And certainly we're you know, looking at weekends now being a lot more uh, mm-hmm. interesting, right? Two days of, of big time uncertainty. Absolutely. Uh, what do you think's going on, man? Because because you and I were talking beforehand. You're you're playing daily moves right now. Um, I'm playing cash. What <laughs> what do we do? What are we to do? Like, how long are we going to hang out before we really start getting back into into our strides? Yeah, I mean, I think that both sides have merit. I think that there's a lot of merit to having gone to cash and. You missed the. Uh, you got a chance to miss the. the Dude, I missed that it. Happened. I, yeah. I missed it. I, like I, I tell you, I I know I missed it, and I know some people made money on it, but I also can sleep good at night right now, so I'm not worried about it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And it had a hell of a run. Um, I I I think that there's two ways to approach it. Uh, you know, you can take the safe route and go to cash and be able to sleep at night, and that makes a lot of sense because, like you said, you never really know when the catalyst could come here in the next uh, 70 days or so. You know, we could be looking at 70, 80 days of this mm-hmm. easily uh, without any real problem. Um, the the flip side of that is to do what you want to do, just do it on a shorter term basis, right? Because the volatility does introduce a lot of opportunities, but they're not going to be opportunities in my expectation that are going to stick, right? So it's not going to be a buy buy at 100, flip it at 150, right? It's going to be buy at 100, flip it at 105, Mm. you know, 110. And then, you know, kind of keep playing the moves as the volatility uh, plays out. Yeah, so that makes I think, sense. Yeah, I think cash or just shorter to short, shortening your your horizon makes a lot of sense here. Until we are have you, more clarity. Uh, it's okay. Um, I was just going to ask: Are you going bigger size since you're going shorter duration, or are you keeping your size the same, or maybe smaller? Um, well, I'm going with more conservative strategies. So, like we were talking about earlier, you know, doing a condor on the market here um, is pretty 
relaxing, right? I have about right now as we speak, I have about <laughs> it's 50 like going points. to the spa. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty close. Uh, and I have like 50 points to the upside here, 50 points to the downside. As long as that doesn't happen by the end of the day, it goes to max profit. Mm -hmm. uh, so what I've been doing is just shortening the time horizon, um, upping the size a little bit, but also doing it in a conservative fashion, right? So ultra conservative structure to the trade, a little bit larger size, shorter duration. Mm. Yeah, right now that conservative side is just really calling to me. Like, I, you know, I don't mind losing money. I really don't. And that, that's part of being a trader. You've, you've, got to, you've got to embrace the loss. Well, I heard somebody say the other day that one of the Marines' uh, slogans, now I've never been in the military, but one of their slogans is uh, embrace the suck. And you know, sometimes when you're a trader, you just got to embrace the suck because you know what? Sometimes it sucks and you got a loss. You got to deal with it. Yeah. Uh, but right now, man, stare cash right in the face. Is, yeah, you know, cash is just calling me. So, I, you know, if it's 79 days or whatever they're calling it, 79 days of chaos or whoever knows, uh, then that's what it's going to be. And you know what? I, I'll deal. Yeah. And at this point, you know, it is it is chaos. But it's it's known chaos to some extent, right? Like it's 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 expected. Now, of course, between now and the end of the year, anything could happen. But uh, you know, ex the, the 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 chaos, the political wrangling, the the legalities of it all, we kind of can work with those probabilities. I think so. Barring some extraneous new event, I think that it's priced in. Oh yeah. Well, I mean. Who who would have thought the price in would have been two thousand points in a week? <laughs> you know what I mean? True, very true. <laughs> I certainly was not on the right side of that. Um, oh really? No, not not at the beginning stages of it. Um, actually, going into this Monday, I put out a blog titled, uh, what "Was it titled uh, Deja Nineteen Eighty Seven Deja Vu?" So I was oh, actually for looking for. Crash? I was actually looking for the exact opposite, actually, you know, 2,000 points down. But then after, you know, a little bit of clarity from the markets um, in terms of my positions in VIX and whatnot, uh, you start to realize, like, wait a second, markets move because they have to, right? And if all the sellers have sold and all the hedgers have hedged, where's the, uh, there, there's only pockets to the upside. So it does make some perverse sense. <laughs> you know, one of the things I was looking at, just casually eyeballing charts wasn't planning to put on any trades whatsoever uh was these are like heavy volume rallies right these are not um like uh, air pockets or, or whatever uh, people would call them i mean there was a lot of volume going on and that, that surprised me i was like uh all right so is this is this legit because you know when you have a rally here's some like uh what do you want to call it who william o'neill um logic right here with the how to trade in stocks um, you know, if, if the rally's happening and there's no volume, um, then it's probably a false rally, but seeing something like this, I, I, I mean, it, it does look like a good setup for a continued rally, but the strength of that move is what concerns me. And maybe it's one of those times where it's like, you let the strength happen, then you let it come to, uh, bounce off moving average. I know that's a, a big thing with you guys at Simpler Trading talk about. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I I agree with all that. Basically, um, good point on the on the the volume. Not only has the volume been good, but the breadth has been good. So the volume, you know, you can have really good volume just from short covering, right? Everybody's on one side of the boat. They all have to buy. You have the natural buyers plus the short sellers that have to buy. So that can create big volume on its own. But then that big volume is also backstopped by incredible breath, um, every, you know, meaning that the advanced decliners are far outpacing. So you're getting, it's not a localized move. It's, it, it is largely tech and largely Amazon and, you know, Microsoft and things like that, which alone could move the market. But it's those 10 FANG stocks plus 5,000 others as well, which... yeah. I, I saw the same thing. So um, when when I have my charts pulled up, the, the scanner just automatically runs. And uh, it's a scanner on the whole S&P 500 looking for bullish things. And like it maxed out at um, 100. <laughs> and it was like, hey, if you want more than this, you're gonna have to upgrade your plan. And I'm like, I've never seen that before. So okay, I guess this is uh, like you're talking about the, the the breadth was very, very large there. Nice. I like that it maxed out. <laughs> Dude, it's like it literally too many results. Out. Yeah, way <laughs> too, too many bullish things going on today, Chris. What are you doing sitting on cash, bro? <laughs> what about gold? Have you considered uh, maybe 
putting that cash to work in gold? So I looked at gold the other day and it was like flat as a pancake. Mm. And that literally turned me off. I'm like, like seriously. So I had my moving average lines on there and I couldn't see the candles because the moving average lines just cover them all up. Like that's how flat it was. Yeah. I was like, well, that's kind of a surprise. Actually, I, I figured gold would have a little bit more oomph to it right now, especially being the uncertainty. And then silver, I mean, I was just talking to somebody earlier today. Silver, like, silver's been eating my lunch, man. Every time I get into silver, it's like, no, nah, I'm going to go the other way, like 8%. And yeah. then I'm going to go the other way, uh, 4 and a half percent like, yeah, oh, so, so, That's the personality <laughs> of silver. <laughs> Screw this guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think that I think it makes some sense. I mean, if you pull up a chart of the dollar, you look at like DXY or you just compare it to the euro, but you know, you could just use DXY on a monthly scale. It does definitely looks like it wants to uh, go much lower. Now, I'm not in the camp that says that the dollar crashes because by saying that you implicitly are saying that the the euro has to rally. There's just no way around that. Um, and I don't really buy that. But in the short term, they are really, really trying to push this dollar lower. And invariably, that should be positive for not just gold and silver, but frankly, uh, stocks, hmm. which we were actually talking about before we uh, kicked off the session. Yeah. All right. So monster moves in stock, declining dollar, which is kind of what we talked about last time. You're 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 schooling me because this is the kind of stuff that I don't I don't pay attention to those kind of macro factors. Um, but I'm glad I have people like you that I can talk to about it. <laughs> and then uncertainty in the election man i just got to tell you more and more i'm just like cash just feels a lot lot safer to me so you know what if you want to go not you but everybody if you want to go and dip your toe in the market go for it just like maybe be a little bit extra cautious at the moment <laughs> yeah no the, the the patterns are still intact you know if you, if you can if you can get past the uncertainty of the next two months um which is somewhat of a known uncertainty. Um, you know, we, we follow the charts here at Simpler pretty pretty much religiously. And uh, if you look at something like EEM, which is emerging markets, mm -hmm. things like IWM, which is, are the small caps, which had been major laggards for years, forever now, um, their monthly charts are pretty explosive. So there will be some rocks in the shoe along the way. But... Um, if those signals truly play out, especially the emerging markets one, um, that 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 foretells uh, continued up upside bias. Yeah, I don't I don't necessarily feel that we're looking at a crash coming. Um, I mean, there's just too much strength going on in the market, even even when it was showing some weakness um, in like September and October and things like. You know, there, there, there's always give and take, but I definitely feel like you're talking about uh, just looking at the bigger picture that, I mean, we're it doesn't look like we're coming to the edge of a cliff and we're going to jump off and, you know, it's going to be a, a decade of of lost, uh, lost returns. Well, they call it the lost decade, right? From what was that, like 2000 to 2010, something like that? Yeah, I mean Japan. Japan had like three lost decades. Yeah, <laughs> I, well, since the uh, in the nineties, uh, two lost decades. Listen, I don't, I don't have time for three lost decades. There, so. <laughs> <laughs> just iron right. condor for thirty years. Yeah, oh, there you go. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I was telling Sam earlier. He uh, he was telling me about his iron condor trade he put on today. I don't trade iron condors anymore, and we didn't really get in uh, the discussion of it then. So let's get into it now. Um, I have got burned so bad on iron condors. In fact. Um, <clears throat> that was when I did a, a portfolio analysis, iron condors in, in one year, I, I don't remember what year, but 90% of my lost dollars came from iron condors. And wow. I was like, I am doing something wrong here, Sam. What, what in the world am I doing wrong? And I, and, and I think what you alluded to was I was holding them. Well, not just too long from the uh, the move standpoint, but also too long in duration, because uh, I was going like forty five ish days, maybe. And while that does give you a, a giant room to play with, um, you know, a lot can happen in forty five to sixty days, and that's kind of where I shot myself in the foot. I'm not blaming the market or anybody else. I mean, it was obviously my own fault. But yeah, what Sam, you got you got to school me on this, man. What did I do wrong? 
Um, well, you know, Iron Condors, well, highly, they have a high probability of success, at least from the mathematical point of view. Um, they do have risk on both ends, right? So you you can bust out to the upside or bust out to the downside, and uh, you know you can have problems that way. Um, what we have seen though in this market, uh, largely to the upside, has been that the 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 moves aren't being priced correctly, at least in my opinion, to the upside. So they're pricing, um, they're underpricing the volatility to the upside, in my humble opinion. And so that can cause them to to break a little bit more consistently to the upside than than the credit that you're receiving. Basically, if you know if you're doing an iron condor, you want to receive enough credit uh, for the trade to justify the volatility positioning. So mm -hmm. meaning that uh, you know if you take in too little of a credit, you won't actually have any kind of buffer between your 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 strikes. Right. Um, so I, I typically don't trade very many things 30, 40 days out. Um, I just I tend to be a little bit of faster trader. Mm -hmm. um, what I would maybe look at instead if you're like the idea of the iron condor but you want to kind of limit one side or the other is just doing it as a put credit spread. You know, and then you just have the one side of it and you have no upside risk if that's an issue. Dude, that's what I do now, man. I go closest to seven days uh, on the option chain and then put credit spreads. And I'll tell you why I do put credit spreads is because that return you can get on a put credit spread is so much better than you can get just on a stock outright, right? Let's, I mean, if the stock doesn't move at all, then you're not making any money. But if the right. stock sits still on a put credit spread, I mean, you could make 20, 30 more or so percent on it literally not doing anything and right. so like that's my go-to like i love a good put credit spread and they're simple man i love yeah. that about them right i don't have to worry you know if it goes this way or if it goes that way and if it's too much in one way or the other whatever and uh you know if it breaks my what i what i really like to do first i like trading with ai i mean that that's my number one thing but additionally running with the uh trend lines and just keep below the trend lines dude just like the easiest easiest game in town yeah, and, and obviously, yeah. all the disclaimers right there. Don't go, uh, don't go say, "Hey, Chris, told me this is the easiest game in town." But for me and my personality, this is what works for me. So, yeah, yeah, just, yeah just, no, they're, they're fantastic. Like, yeah, they're 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 great. That's probably the strategy we use the most often, just for all the points that you just mentioned. Um, you know, the, the biggest one being that if nothing happens, you can still make max profit. Really, I mean, if you position, uh, you know, let's say that you sell a four twenty put on Tesla and. It of doesn't course, move. you would say a 420 put on Tesla like that. I knew you were going to Tesla, so totally, you said 420. <laughs> totally, totally, totally random number. Um, but let's say you did, uh, and it basically oscillated at 420 and closed at 420. Um, you'd get to keep the max, the full credit, and essentially your ROI would be 100. percent So, mm. and that would be if nothing happened. And if yeah. it goes up, it just makes it easier. So you 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 win. You know, there's three ways the market will move: up, down, and sideways. Most of the time, sideways. Put credit spreads let you win in two of the three ways, so it's uh, it's fantastic. Oh, dude, for sure. Well, Sam, maybe we need to have like a put credit spread episode, right? Just just not necessarily talking because there's plenty of videos talk, you know, who draw the things and they're like you profit here and don't profit there, but just like have Less a conversation. The whiteboard. Yeah, we don't need the whiteboard. Let's just have a conversation about put credit spreads or yeah, I mean, all I credit think, spreads, things like that. Yeah, I think for most for most new investors, that's probably where they should start, focus, and master before they do anything else. Certainly better than calls, puts. Um, you can you can emulate or simulate a comparable directional move with calls and calls or puts uh, by just upping the size on the on the call credit spread. And mm -hmm. in that instance, you'll you'll have something that mirrors the movement of a call potentially. But then again, if nothing happens, then you get to keep the full credit. So it's uh, yeah, I like it a lot. You know, people who are just trading stocks, they don't even know. <laughs> they don't even know how much easier life can get. You know, when you got that like 70% probability just like on the get go on the like a 30 delta put credit spread and then you tack on like a uh, trend line and, and things like that. Just yeah, total yeah, game changer. It, I literally yeah, was sitting right here in this chair. Actually, I'm sitting on a, a <laughs> I'm sitting on a yoga ball right now. Um, but sitting in that chair and I, I looked at the, at the screen and I said to myself, why did I make this so hard? <laughs> Cause like, you know, I spent years just like grinding away, trying to figure this out. And I'm like, put credit spread, trend line, follow the trend, like 
doesn't really have to get that complicated. I mean, the longer I've traded, the easier things, not easier, but the simpler things have gotten. Like simpler trading. Yeah, absolutely. That's kind of the ironic thing is you have to kind of go to the extreme to realize that the simpler side of it is actually easier and better. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, you probably had to go down your own rabbit hole to uh, come to that. Not necessarily conclusion, but it's one of these kind of aha moments where it's like, oh, wait, I don't need to overcomplicate it to uh, to actually have a high probability of success and really good track record. Yeah. You know, there was actually a time where I was convinced that if I had the right combination of calls and puts on the right strikes and the right expirations, I could find a risk for retrade. Yeah. And I tell you, I went weeks where I'm like, what if I did this one and this one and that one and this one and that one and this one and this one and this one. Right. Just making combinations and uh yeah it didn't work <laughs> yeah well the, uh, you know the the, uh, the algorithms are also doing the same game right and they're probably <laughs> just a little faster than us and, and i would bet you the people who programmed them are just like oh well probably a lot smarter than me <laughs> <laughs> a few phds in there i'm sure a couple yeah i mean what do those stand for <laughs> Well, Sam, listen, this has been a great conversation. Really enjoyed chatting with you. Uh, we really highly encourage everyone to go check out Sam over at simplertrading.com. Sam is Sam's a man. Uh, I mean, he really knows what he's talking about here, as you can tell. And Sam, I can't wait to uh, get you back online again. Yeah, I look forward to it. And I look forward to talking to you about uh, the potential, just real quick to close out the, the video, yeah. I guess, uh, the potential and just something for your viewers to watch out for. Of course, trade with probabilities as traders. We always... There is no sure thing. You know, we have probabilities that we have to trade with. But uh, for for your viewers, check out the potential that the VIX could actually unwind going into the end of the year. Basically, to simplify it, uh, they they put on all this insurance uh, that we are going to have some, for lack of a better term, crash event. If that insurance then has to get cashed in because there's no crash event, then that actually creates kind of an upward push in the market uh, to close Mm -hmm. the year. So that I mean, makes it probably catch sense. most people off guard too. I mean that that makes a ton of sense because we've had a VIX that's been like twenty five ish plus for almost all year since the coronavirus, right? And now coronavirus it's crazy to think, right? Coronavirus is just like going on its third wave coming into the fall, which is kind of scary. But then you look at the death count. I don't know if you look at that because maybe you're not as morbid as me. But if you look at the death count, um, like it's actually been flatlined here at le- in Texas, at least. I don't know other places. Uh, but, you know, it, it's going up, it's ramping up, but the death count is staying flat, which gives me a lot of hope, actually, that maybe now they figured something out. Because maybe at the beginning, obviously, they didn't know what they were doing. And there was a lot more people dying, unfortunately. But now it seems to have like, even though the, the cases are going up, the death count is not going up at the same speed. So with that being said, uh, maybe there will be a lot more unwinding um, of the uh, the, pro- the protection place. And in fact, it reminds me when I've been trading, like even the, uh, the SPY, Qs, IWM, things like that, they've been showing in my broker platform hard to borrow, which means hard to go short, um, like for months now, which is crazy to think about the most liquid things in the market being hard to short like how's that that makes no sense but maybe it's finally the case where that's going to start to unwind toward the end of the year like you're saying like i said people you gotta listen to sam he's a smart guy thanks chris i appreciate you man it's really great to chat with you again today good great to be here okay so what'd you think that was pretty incredible right Now, if you like that, that's only a taste, only a sample of what you're going to find in the full AI stock trading system. And I really highly encourage you to go and check this out. Obviously, you are interested in learning and how to trade, and that's why you're listening to this podcast. Now, I'm going to take and download my entire trading system that I use day in and day out onto you. (laughs) And the only way I'm going to be able to do that is over at the AIStockTradingSystem.com. You're going to get phase one, two, and three, several bonuses. And on top of that, I'm going to walk you through over a dozen trades that I put on inside of my account, holding your hand and showing you exactly how I got in, how I got out, how I use the artificial intelligence data, and how this could work inside of your own trading portfolio on a daily basis. So make sure you head on over to AIStockTradingSystem.com. That's AIStockTradingSystem.com to learn more and to get started and to download 
my decade plus worth of trading experience into your hands so you can start using the AI stock trading system today. The five-step system to take the guesswork out of trading. Hey, if you like this video, let me know by leaving me a like below and then subscribe and share it with somebody you think could use it as well. Be sure to comment below with your biggest takeaway from this episode and any suggestions you have for future episodes. And finally, make sure you watch these other videos to help you trade faster and trade smarter, and I'll see you on the next episode.